Hello, everyone. Welcome to the 2013 Mr. Easton competition. Tonight, we have 12 contestants competing to be this year's Mr. Easton. Let us first introduce you to the people who will be deciding our winner. Our judges are Mr. Auger, Miss Pauli <laughs> Miss Paulino, and Mr. Tewitt. Also tonight, our fourth judge will be you. Throughout the show, you have the ability to vote at a table next to the judges' table, where placing your donations in each contestant's boxes, you can vote for your favorite. Now, without further ado, we present you to your 2013 Mr. Easton contestants. Oh, um, I don't know where they are. We'll be right back. Oh my god, the show's about to start. Where are they? Don't throw leaves at me! They're all wet! I... <laughs> I'm Leaf Man! We have like five minutes. Where could they be right now? Call my dad. He always answers. All right. Where's Duffy? 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 Where's
Great dancing, boys. Wow, I had no idea a lot of them could dance like that. I guess the Backstreet Boys are back. <laughs> Our first round tonight will be sportswear. But while we wait for them to get changed, um, all of you should definitely consider going to Tuxtown for your next tux. Tux? Jose at Tuxtown will hook you up. They hooked up all the contestants tonight with great tuxedos. Our first contestant, Alex Duffy, will be performing a, uh, a field hockey, showing his talent in field hockey tonight. He's just getting changed right now. That skirt doesn't get in too easy. Actually, it does. <laughs> Alex Duffy was born in the world with no home. He tamed a wolf at the age of four, but it got s sick and he had to put it down with a large rock. He then ate the rock. He rides a mountain lion to school daily. He feeds it rocks. He grew too big and strong and made himself into Batman. 
He did this with some classic American can-do attitude, elbow grease, and a lean, mean, rock-built bod, rock, rock bod. In his free time, Bruce Wayne is buried in his basement. He was killed with a rock. His Batman training has given him the will, power, and skill to win Mr. Easton. And he will win Mr. Easton, regardless of what the judges say. Want to hear a funny joke? A man walked into a supermarket, goes up to the cashier, and says, Where are the potatoes? He says, aisle seven. He goes to aisle seven, and there's no potatoes. Not a single potato. Anyways, Alex Duffy turned into a parasite before he was born and took control of all the Mr. Easton judges. They have been convinced to deem Alex Duffy the winner. Alex also uses mind control on the other contestants into thinking that they have a chance to win. They will not, especially Shay. <laughs> Thank you, Alex Duffy. Up next is Kyle Benson, showing off his martial arts skills. Rumor has it that there is a man, a man who defies all common so social and social norms. Where most people take a right, he takes a left. Where most people see nothingness, he sees possibility. Where most people attend sports games, he attends concerts, often to see bands you've probably never heard of, although he is in no way a hipster. When most people wear khakis and polo shirts, he wears denim and a leather jacket. When people wear more sleeves, he wears less sleeves. When people complain about the cold, he says, I have no sleeves, and I am not cold. Stop complaining. Except for when he himself gets cold. Then he complains more than anyone. He's the kind of guy who has enough t-shirts to last over a month, wearing only one a day. He's the kind of guy who goes out and purchases music on CDs instead of downloading the music. He's the kind of guy who goes on a field trip to a state prison and comes back with a new video game for only $3. Some people call him crazy or insane. He prefers to call himself slightly on the eccentric side. The All Rams rock star himself, Kyle Benson. Thank you very much, Kyle. Up next is Shay O'Connor, who will be showing off his wrestling skills. As you probably know by now, Shay O'Connor has just arrived from Hollywood, California. He is with us tonight to share his amazing wrestling skills that he acquired while training at Victoria Peak in Hong Kong for the last three months with Jackie Chan. As you can see, he is a lean, mean fighting machine. He loves wearing moose pajamas and can rock them like nobody else. His favorite Japanese food is Taco Bell, and here in America, he says his favorite is Sing Yi, a Japanese restaurant. He can be seen with Chuck Norris doing all the push-ups. Please give a warm welcome to the famous wrestling WWE champion from the 1936 Winter Olympics, Shay O'Connor. Thanks, Shay. Next up, we have Harrison Phelps, straight off the racquetball court. Harrison? Harrison is a professional frolicker. He particularly enjoys large open spaces with lots of horses for him to stroke tenderly and frolic alongside. When he's not enjoying the company of the equine, Harrison enjoys reading such classics like Charlotte's Web, The Magic Treehouse, and Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Harrison is deathly allergic to Twilight, though, and asphyxiates if a copy of Stephanie Meyer novel is within spitting distance. Also, as a food concierge, Harrison loves to make epic meals ranging from his mother's homemade frittata to cereal. In fact, Harrison's cereal making ability won national recognition when he fed Tony the Tiger unsoggy cornflakes, an unheard of phenomenon before our time. But what Harrison really enjoys doing is helping people. Need someone to finish a level on Mario? Harrison will be there. Want some help doing a somersault? He'll hold you as you inevitably land on your face. And he'll laugh. He'll laugh because somersaults are impossible. But, that's, but even if your attempts are futile, he'll help you because that's the kind of guy he is. A frolicker, a reader, and a foodie. Harrison is a shoe in for Mr. Easton, and his racquetball skills definitely set him apart from other candidates. Thanks, Harrison. Up next, we have Kyle Johnson. Kyle, we'll be playing ping pong.
Kyle Johnson is known as Kyle J, Kyle J says hey, or the black <laughs> or the black hole. When he was hatched from his mother at the age of zero, the doctor told him he was unique right away. They said, this little boy is a ball of fur, and a ball of fur he was. People mistake him for a bush, a pile of leaves, or even Bigfoot. However, this makes no sense because he has a size 11 shoe. It was a rough childhood for Kyle. At age 13, he, moves, he moved to Antarctica, and a penguin told him to go home and practice ping pong. It was talking to a penguin, and he listened to it. So back in Northeastern, Kyle went to practice ping pong. It has been five years of ping pong practice. He loves, he loves how his cat-like movements move his hair in a tranquil-like way. It tickles him. <laughs> now at the age of 18, Kyle has devoted his life to ping pong so he can afford a great life for his cat, Snickers. His goal is to be a millionaire by next week so he and his cat can live by themselves. Snickers does not like Nutella. When he is not playing ping pong, he is usually brushing his leg hair and petting his cat in a front-to-back method method. He washed his body with conditioner to keep his hair soft like him. Another plus about his hair is that he can keep a lucky lady warm in the winter. <laughs> he is a free blanket with a little spice. Win or lose tonight, Kyle knows he can go home to his little Snickers. Thank you, Kyle. Up next is Greg Zuroff at the pool. Greg Zuroff enjoys long walks on the beach and deep, meaningful conversations. He definitely wants to have kids. He wants three of them, one of each. He loves to laugh. He loves life to the, lives life to the fullest. He loves to laugh and to smile. When he isn't saving women and children from burning buildings, Greg can be found next to a fire reading a book about love, loss, or teenage vampires. He is easygoing and relaxed, and doesn't believe there is such a thing as a typical Friday night. He can't live without food, water, or friends. He is spectacularly handsome, intelligent, and he knows what the fox says. Greg is a very athletic, borderline professional bowler, and he is a not-so-starving artist. Perhaps his best quality is that he is the most humble man you will ever meet in your life. Thank you, Greg. Up next is Tim Duvall, who will be golfing. <laughs> Tim, Duvall's <coughs> Tim Duvall's life began in a similar fashion to every other fetus that, it, that has existed. He won a race. Some might say he has already passed the prime of his life. He was at one point in his life a season pass holder at ski board, but his extreme thirst and lack of funds made it impossible for him to keep that honor. Tim had his first kiss at the ripe young age of five. He has high hopes that this year will be the end of his 13-year dry spell. <laughs> Aside from pursuing his second kiss, Tim can often be found volunteering in local nursing homes because he has a passion for community, service, and an equally strong passion for older women. One of Tim's favorite hobbies is campaigning for women's rights. He likes to think of himself as a male feminist. A newer hobby of Tim's is growing facial hair. His new lip fur, so, lip fur so far has not received positive reviews. But Tim doesn't care, which is probably why he doesn't have a girlfriend. <laughs> Although it may seem otherwise, Tim's life has not been 100% bad luck. One of his misfortunes, for lack of a better term, breaking his butt, has been beneficial. The swelling from this injury never fully healed and left him with a bottom that makes women wish he would wear yoga pants more often. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> Up next, we have Stephen Marr. And he's at the gym. Stephen Marr sleeps in the nude on Tuesday and Thursday. He likes to play head games with his bed by showing it who's boss. He takes daily trips to Yankee Candle to see what new candles came in. His favorite from last month was Cinnamon Apple. Mmm. Yesterday's shipment brought in Trickleberry Moonlight. He likes going for walks around carnivals just to make friends with the carny folk. 
He also enjoys watching awkward moments while eating a bowl of Apple Jacks. He likes scrunching his toes in the sand because it makes him giggle. He apologizes for being early, thanks you when he's on time. He also watches The Notebook when he needs a good cry. His life is a continual cycle of speed dating and roller derby. When he sings in the shower, he dies a little inside because he has no one to share it with. Spring is his favorite time of year because, all of, the flowers, because of all the flowers. When he was a boy, he had seven imaginary friends. Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> Those were the days. <laughs> Nighttime is especially scary for Steven. It reminds him how lonely he is. If Stephen Marr sneezes when he is alone, he blesses himself. He responds, thank you. He hates when people hit him right in his feelings. It leaves bruises that are deeper than skin. Thanks, Stephen. <laughs> Up next is polo player Ben Tran. Born Benjamin Tran to Han Tran and Katrina Tran, Benjamin lived a fairly normal life. He lived a majority of his life in the city of Brockton, where he earned a significant amount of street cred, which he still has to this day. In West Brockton, born and raised on the playground where he spent most of his days, chilling out, maxing, relaxing all cool, and shooting some b-ball outside of the school, when a couple of guys, they were up, they to, were no up to no good, started making trouble in the neighborhood. He got in a little fight, and his mom got scared, and said, we're moving to the town of Easton over there. There he went through the Easton Public Schools, and now he attends Alvarams High School, trying to be Mr. Easton. Thank you, Ben Tran. <laughs> Next, we have Rob Eldridge. <laughs> Rob is a very special kind of human. This is mainly because of an unfortunate accident in his childhood involving nuclear waste. Instead of blood, he has straight Mountain Dew running through his veins. He says it isn't very good for carrying oxygen, but his system has learned to live on carbon dioxide, just like the plants used to. Not only is he able to use carbon dioxide to power his life processes, he is also a seven-year-old trapped in a large body. Whereas most people are usually watching Sports Center or very other forms of real TV, he, is, he will stop everything to watch an episode of Tom and Jerry or the Looney Tunes. To illustrate this, all of his friends were over. He disappeared for a half hour, and when people started to get worried, they found him in the next room, quietly watching Tom and Jerry alone. Other than that, he refused to eat his vegetables and will eat things that are horribly unhealthy for him, yet he still manages to remain a relatively healthy body weight when he really should be morbidly obese. Also due to the radioactive event, he is able to grow only when it's bright out, levitate 75% of his body off the ground, super strength while sleeping, communicate with furniture. They all say that they're tired of getting pushed around and stepped on. And finally, he has an extraordinary ability, sarcasm. Last but not least, Britton Copley is a goofy goober meanie weenie. That is all. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. Next up is Matt Downey playing Ultimate Frisbee. Born in a vat of curry in the back of an Indian restaurant, Matt became very attached to it at birth. Instead of nursing him, his mother would give him six bowls of curry a day. In adolescence, his room had to be a cool 105 degrees Fahrenheit in order for him to function. His doctor told him at the age of 12 that he has developed a lifelong requirement of heat and the absence of it could result in death. This news startled our contestant, who fled his colonial home and made moves to India. There, he was able to support his addiction by opening a street cart. This allowed him to make ends meet. After six years of mindlessly consuming curry, he decided to see the local guru. The guru urged him to wean himself off curry by meditating so intensely his blood would boil. He created a world-renowned recipe for curry, which inspired him to open his own business, Constant Curry, which quickly became a household name. Despite his new millionaire, st millionaire status, he reverted back to his curry addiction. He purchased an Olympic-sized swimming pool of curry, which drained his curry supply and his money and put him out of business. For the past few years, he has been roaming the streets looking for anything that could put a few bucks in his pocket. That takes us to today, where our contestant hopes to win and sell the rights to the parking spot for his next fix of curry. Thanks, Matt. Last up is Reed Star in a potato sack. <coughs> Reed 
star is not good at anything. His mom, who was very mean, even once said, my son is the most horrible form of life ever to disgrace this world. The only friends he has are paid by his mom and dad to take him out of the house so they don't have to look at his ugly face for too long. Teachers despise Reed for his ignorance and lack of comprehension for any information whatsoever, and classmates have to restrain themselves from utterly destroying him just because they hate that stupid look on his face he has all the time. Let me tell you a story about Reed that just shows how much of a, how much of a detri detri detriment he is to society and a defective human being. This one time, Reed was at a playground, obviously being an idiot. Some kid came up to him who clearly didn't know who Reed, who Reed was and said, hey, want to go on the seesaw together? So Reed punched the kid square in the forehead and told him to go. Ride seahorses somewhere else, he said, because he didn't appreciate it. To be honest, that story wasn't true, and Reed is not such a bad guy. He is a real softy. Reed loves to hug his mommy and daddy and tell them he loves them. Sometimes, before he goes to bed, he drinks a cup of sleepy time tea and falls into a deep slumber, off to the sound of the sweet lullabies of, his, of the angelic voice of his mom, Elizabeth. He rubs lotion on his tummy and ears to make sure he is, he is as soft as tapioca pudding. <laughs> For the next day, when he gets to see his girlfriend, Kristen, who, thinks, who he thinks is really cute, he spends most of his time crying, drawing pictures with chalk in the driveway, or skipping. He also does karate and roller skates, through, though both of them make him really nervous. Sometimes you can't find Reed because he's cowering from his father, whose name cannot be mentioned. <laughs> this growing boy always drinks his milk and eats his vegetables and simply wants everyone to love and care for each other. Thanks, Reed. Our next section of tonight's show is the talent portion. To start the evening, we'll have Alex Duffy performing his impersonation of Batman. Whenever you're ready, Alex. No one can save you now, Jillian. Nobody can save you. Oh, no! Let's go. It's Batman! Good job, Alex. Next up, we have Kyle Benson, who will be singing a song.
start to fall And you live as you've never lived before Slowly, gently, music shall surround you Darkness which you know you cannot fight The darkness of the music of the night Let your mind start a journey to a strange new world Purge your thoughts of the life you knew before Let your soul Grasp it, sense it, tremulous and tender. Open up your mind, let your fantasies unwind in this darkness which you know you cannot find. Great job, Kyle. I've never seen anything like that before. It was really good. Yeah, that sh sent shivers down my spine. Up next, we'll have Shea O'Connor performing some of his wrestling moves. Maybe next time, Shay. Good job. It's all right. I'm sure you tried your hardest. Up next, we have Harrison Phelps, who will be singing.
you hear me? All right. All right, I'm going to sing a little song. If you uh, know it, you can uh, join along with me. Uh, I learned guitar uh, uh, two days ago, so uh, please forgive me if I uh, start sweating in the middle of this. So, here we go. Let's gather around the campfire and sing our campfire song. Our C-A-M-P-F-I-R-E-S-O-N-G song. And if you don't think that we can sing it faster, then you're wrong. But it will help if you just sing along. C-A-M-P-F-I-R-E-S-O-N-G song. C-A-M-P-F-I-R-E-S-O-N-G song. And if you don't think that we can sing it faster, then you're wrong. But it will help if you just sing along. C-A-M-P-F-I-R-E-S-O-N-G song. Emily! Good, Chris! Good! But it will help, oh, it will help if you just sing along. Oh, yeah! Great job, Harrison. Okay, so up next, we'll have Kyle Johnson performing a magic show. <laughs> for, the, for those of you that did not know this, I'm magical. I'm furball to ferocious feline. I'm a mean... <coughs> So a little hairball. So I'm one seven, 155 pounds. Gonna perform a few tricks for you guys. Great job, Kyle. Up next, we have Greg Zaroff, who will be doing some jokes. <laughs> um, Greg, it's time for your comedy routine now. Thank you. Thank you. now? All right. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't, I don't really know why I'm doing comedy tonight. I'm really not that funny. But I mean, like, who is this? Or I could dance. And you saw how that went. I mean, I was afraid someone's going to call 911 on me, thinking I was having a seizure on stage. Not a good experience. And then singing. I'm the one person who can make Friday sound worse than it already does. Friday, Friday, 
Oh, sorry. sorry. But yeah, if Mr. Easton was a plane ride, this is the part where the pilot comes on. He's like, attention, attention. Please do not be alarmed. Please return to your seats. Put your seatbelts on. Prepare for a crash landing. But yeah. So I was watching. Watching 16 and Pregnant last week. Good show. And there, there were these 16-year-old girls on. And yeah, who would have thought 16-year-old girls on 16 and Pregnant? But yeah. And they were taking care of babies. I mean, you had to feed them. You had to change their diapers, put them to sleep. I could never handle such a codependent relationship. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. So I heard backstage today some people were saying break the leg. And I, I never get that. I mean, what does it make sense? Why would you want someone to break the leg? What I do get is that don't embarrass us and don't bother coming home for my mom and dad. <laughs> my mom's shaking her head back there. Everybody have a spare bed tonight? You do? All right, thanks. All right, yeah, and so now we have, we had two assistants, we had two principals, and that was working fine. And then we had to go and hire a third. I mean, how many principals did it take to give us office attention at lunch? I mean, what, you just want to spot them, want to write down their name, want to be like, see you later. <laughs> All right, thanks. You've been great tonight. Nice job, Greg. That was really funny. Up next, we will have Tim Duvall performing... <laughs> performing a moving rendition of Forever Young.
Thanks, Tim. I think we have the next American Idol in here. Next up, we have Stephen Maher with a stream of consciousness. How we doing? <coughs> I was not expecting a stool that small. Anyway, one of the things that I absolutely love about teenagers is how interested they are in social media. Twitter, especially, is very popular. And one of the things I find hysterical, and quite frankly, they don't make sense, are hashtags. And I have some for you tonight that I'd like to just share. Hashtag I can't. You can't what? What can you not do? I don't understand that. You can't. I don't know. I don't know. Hashtag turn up. A turn up is a vegetable. It is not a great vegetable. In fact, not one of my favorites. The next one, my personal favorite. Hashtag, I'm literally dying right now. <laughs> if you are dying, you need to put your phone down and get to a hospital. <laughs> the last thing that you should be doing is tweeting. <laughs> Goodness gracious, people. Easy on the hashtags. Uh, quick question. How many of you, well, by a show of hands, peed in the pool when you were little kids? I can't see any of you, so it doesn't matter. The lights are blaring, so. But I'm just curious. We can't buy candy in school anymore. Thanks a lot, Obama. My shoe's untied. Thanks a lot, Obama. As an 18-year-old, I find it very peculiar that I have to ask teachers to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Me, an adult, asking another adult for permission to do what animals do, <laughs> to do what people do on a regular basis. I have to ask you, and my favorite response from teachers is, wait five minutes. This lesson is very important, Stephen. I, I believe it, but if I wanted to go to the bathroom in five minutes, I would have asked you in five minutes. I would not have asked you right now. I swear teachers think that we're going to play like shoots and ladders on the bathroom floor. Like, first of all, shoots and ladders is not a very popular game anymore. It's not that fun. Second of all, the bathroom floor is very dirty. Not that I have anything against our janitors, they're fantastic, but it just goes with the territory that it's a bathroom. I don't know, that's just my little spiel. Thank you guys, all right. I'll, I'll take this. <laughs> Great job, Steven. Up next, we have Ben Tran showing off his cooking skills. He'll be making rice. Kind of a 
assistant would I be if I didn't solve problems? Tonight, I would teach you the art of making your perfect thing of rice. <laughs> now, before I begin, this is not cooking. This is art. For simplicity's sake, I have pre-measured rice. <laughs> and I provided the water. <laughs> now, something they don't teach you in culinary school is the ancient Tran family secret of making rice. <laughs> the secret is a two to one ratio. One part rice, two parts water. <laughs> so, assistants, please hold. <laughs> First, we put in the rice. Next, we put in the water. <laughs> Please hand me the spatula. Very important, it must be wooden. This has been passed down through my family for one generation. Next, you turn on the heat. First, you must get it boiling. <laughs> when it is done boiling and the water is almost gone, you turn that thing down to simmer. Now you put, now you do the waiting game. Now when you feel the time is right, your rice should be ready. It should not be too dry or too soggy. So be careful, the pot might be hot. Thanks for the lesson, Ben. Up next, we have Rob Eldridge, who will be drawing. <laughs> Go, Rob.
I will be drawing for you today. Great job, Rob. I think that it's considered bribery, so we might have to deduct some points, but good job, Rob. Next, we'll have Matt Downey doing some snake charming. Okay, I don't mean to alarm anyone, but in this basket is a cobra. <laughs> Looks pretty angry. Are you angry, cobra? <sighs> that is actually the most insubordinate snake I've ever seen. Guess I'm gonna have to charm it. Charm to me. Let's let's try it out. Wow, that's amazing. Wow. Well, I would say that the snake is no longer a danger to society. I think I can let it free. Go, snake, go. Everyone check your boots. Wow, Matt, that was really impressive. Great job. Up next, we have Reed Starr, who will be singing White Christmas.
Hey, everybody. Um, I'm Santa. I want to sing a little song to get you all in the uh, holiday spirit. But don't worry, I include, in ev I include everybody. <laughs> Feel free to sing along. Christmas, just like the ones I used to know, where the treetops glisten and children listen to hear sleigh bells in the snow. In the snow, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas with every grain. This card I write. May your days be merry and bright. Uh, thanks, Reed. Thank you very much. That was pretty unexpected, but very, very talented. Your singing voice is great. So our next category will be formal wear. Again, thank you for Tuxtown. Seriously, Jose will hook you up. Tuxtown is proud to donate the tuxedos for Mr. Eastman tonight, and even donated a free tuxedo to the 2014 prom for the winner of tonight's show. Our first person to display their formal wear will be <laughs> will be Alex Duffy, modeling a traditional black tuxedo by Ralph Lauren with a purple vest and bow tie. With his escort, Gillian McCollum. Thank you, Alex. 
stuffy. Next, we have contestant number three, Shay O'Connor, with his escort, Katie Persley. Now that's a nice talk. Ladies and gentlemen, Shay O'Connor. Next up, we have contestant number five, Kyle Johnson and his escort, Jessica Brocklesby. It's a very classy look, Kyle. Ladies and gentlemen, Kyle Johnson. Up next is contestant number six, Greg Zaroff, with his escort, Catherine Green. Greg is showing off a three button tuxedo from Tuxtown with a splash of color in the accessories. Looking good, Greg. Up next, we have contestant number seven, Tim Duvall, and his escort, Kate Holler. Ladies and gentlemen, Tim Duvall. Up next, we have contestant number eight, Stephen Marr, and his escort, Lindsay Foster. Stephen is sporting a very classic gray tuxedo with a nice light blue accessory. Contestant number nine, Ben Tran, with his escort, Yasmin Miftal. Gentlemen, Ben Tran. Up 
Up next, we have contestant number nine, Rob Eldridge, and his escort, Karina Aronson. Rob is electrifying in his lime green tuxedo, only fed at Tuckstown, 40 Main Street, Cotton Center, from Route 138. Come down and see Jose to find your unique 2013 Palm Tuxedo. Looking good, Rob. Next is contestant number 11, Matt Downey and his escort, Pauline Irvine. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Downey. Last but not least, we have contestant number 12, Reed Star, and his escort, Kristen Badalaro. What a nice looking couple. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Reed Star. And that concludes our formal wear portion. Up next, we'll have the interview section. Okay, if we could have the contestants out to the stage, we will ask each contestant two questions. They'll randomly be drawn from a bucket, just so everyone knows no one has seen the questions in advance, so it's all fair. Be prepared. All right, everyone, let's get started. So first, Reed, will you please pick a question? What is your favorite school subject and why? I <laughs> All right, thanks, Reed. So, Matt, will you please pick a question? If you were on a raft and you could only save one of the judges, who would it be and why? Who are the judges? <laughs> Mr. Auger, Mr. Tewitt, and Ms. Paulina. Well, Ms. Paulina is my guidance counselor, so. Wait, what was the question again? <laughs> if you were on a raft, lost in the ocean, and you could only save one person, who would it be and why? Well, I'd choose her because she could guide me to, sh to land. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Rob, pick your question. 
What is your favorite dance move? And can you please show us? I really like to twerk. I think you have to prove it, Rob. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. That was interesting. Okay, Ben. And who is your, f your celebrity idol and why? The guys on Iron Chef. They're pretty cool. All right, thank you, Ben. What is your favorite book and why? Harry Potter, there's magic. <laughs> thank you, Steve. <laughs> what is your favorite song, and can you sing a few lines from it? My favorite song, Jumper by Third Eye Blind. <laughs> I wish you would step back from that ledge, my friend. We could cut ties with all the lies that you've been living in. <laughs> all right. Good job, Tim. Next, Greg, who is your personal hero and why? I mean, I don't think anybody should be uh, put on a pedestal as a hero. I think we're all just equal here. Some may be more equal than others, but pretty all equal. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. That's an interesting take. Next, Kyle Johnson. If you could spend one day with any teacher, who would it be and why? There's a few options running through my mind. I can't really say, but I'm just going to put it out there and uh, say, not Mr. Auger. <laughs> Thanks, Kyle. <laughs> OK. And Harrison, your question will be, if you could have one superpower, what would it be? I would want a personal moving movie just wherever I go. Because whenever I'm in the middle of um, history and I just want to phase out of Oedipus Rex and Homer, I could, I could definitely see getting down with some, like, get ready to. All right. <laughs> Good job, Harrison. OK, Shay. If your life were a movie, what would be your soundtrack? Um. What was that one? Uh, Rocky or something like that? Running up the stairs. Yeah, Eye of the Tiger. Yeah. All right, thank you, Shay. Oh, okay, would you like to read it? Yeah. All right. If you could be any animal, what animal would you be and why? Hmm. Platypus. They're, they're pretty cool. I mean, they're, they're the only mammal that can lay an egg. I mean, and like, they're like part duck, part beaver. They're just so cool. All right, thank you. <laughs> what is your idea of the perfect date, including who it would be with? 
Uh, I just want to say, for everybody that might not know, Britton was really, really nervous tonight before he came out here. And, um, yeah, just look at him, you know? But <laughs> he's done a pretty stellar job, I think. So let's give him a round of applause for that. I do have to say, though, your hands are very sweaty, and this mic is gross, so you got to take it back right now. <laughs> yeah, um, thank you for the compliment and the dig, but what's your favorite, or what would be your ideal date? <laughs> I just want to thank everybody that helps. <laughs> that helped set this night up, you know. A lot, of, a lot of time went into this. I want to thank Jose from Tuckstown for making us all look so nice. Uh, I want to thank Mackenzie for teaching a lot of very untalented people how to dance. Uh, I want to thank Emily and Nicole for setting this up. And I want to thank Britton and Liz for, for hosting. And yeah, and Mr. Riley as well for uh, being the head of the show. And if I forgot anybody, I'm sorry. Thank you. That's all. All right. Good job, Duffy. Congrats. <laughs> so our second round of questions is more of um, their dares, which will a lot of them will involve the audience. Not really questions. So for starters, we'll have Reed. All right, find an administrator and give them your best excuse for missing class. Go right ahead. All right, let's find somebody. <laughs> I'm going to button my seat. Get out there. Raise your hand if you're... My suit is very pink. Inchbowl. <laughs> I'm sorry, I missed class today. It was, um... <sighs> Come on! All right, well, I wouldn't normally want to tell us in front of a bunch of people, but, um, well, me and my mommy like to hang out sometimes. <laughs> and, uh, well, what we usually like to do is go to Costco. <laughs> and you know how the, you know how you have the, <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> okay. Um, you know how at Costco, the, you can, you can like get food at the, it's free. That's what we did. <laughs> and then we went home and snuggled for like three hours. <laughs> if that's okay, is that okay? No, okay. Tell the audience your best knock-knock joke. Knock-knock. A stage. A stage of incredibly handsome young men. Go out into the audience and find us someone who is willing to come up to come up on stage with you. Yeah, I'll take a mic. I
you. Come on, come on. What's going on? Yeah, not too much, you know, Mr. Easton and stuff. Oh, that's, that's good. Well, this is the stage. Uh, you, don't, you don't see much of it at any other time. But oh, really? Yeah, you know, orchestra doesn't do much on you. What Ooh, am I supposed to do with her? That, that burn. Just hang out? So how's life? Good. How's your grades? Good. How's your relationship with your teacher? Can, can we stop this now? Absolutely not. <laughs> Good. <laughs> What's your favorite class? I, I like bio. No, uh, that, that's, you like it. I want to know your favorite. <laughs> bio. Why is bio your favorite? Is it because of Mr. Mulcahy? Yeah. You hear that, Mulk? If you're out there. Q R <laughs> Went the wrong direction. Um Q P Wow, I'd probably go to jail right now if I got pulled over. Um, <laughs> um let me think. P N O M no O N M O No O N M L K. Um, J. H. No, I. H. Um, A. B. C. D. E. F. G. H. I. G. F. E. D. C. B. A. Recite your favorite childhood nursery rhyme. Uh, I was more of a fan of a campfire song, so if that's all right, I'll do that. There once was a man named Michael Finnegan, had no hair on his chin again. Wind blew him off and then blew in again. Poor old Michael Finnegan, beginning in. Everybody! There once was a man named Mike, no. Michael Finnegan had no hair. On his chin again, wind blew it off, and then blew in again. Poor old Michael Finnegan. Recite as many digits of, digits of pi as you can. <clears throat> 3 point one four. Present this flower to someone in the audience. We have the lights up. Hey, I just met you. And it's crazy, but here's this flower. Call me maybe. <laughs> Get the audience to do a roller coaster simulation with you.
All right. Everyone strap your seatbelts on. We're going for a ride. Ready? Going up. Getting to the top. All right, here we go, here we go. Get hands up. Oh, we're going back up. Oh. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, this is perfect for you. Show off your best air guitar moves. Find a teacher in the audience and either sing to them or recite a poem. Who am I going for? Who wants it? Hey, Miss Murphy. Roses are red. Violets are blue. You want to try and finish it? No, thank you. I, I just want to be with you. Where's my mom? Hi, Mom. I love you. Here you go, Liz. All right, so that concludes our questioning portion of the competition. So now, um, you guys are the judge. Will you get one vote towards who wins? So if you put in money towards whoever's box that you think was the funniest or was the most talented, then your vote will contribute. So do that. OK. OK, those boxes are over there. You can see them waving their hands. And now the judges will Judge, deliberate, and we will soon have a winner shortly. If I was your boyfriend, I'd never let you go. I could take you places you ain't never been before. Baby, take a chance so you'll never ever know. I got money in my hands that I really like to blow. Swipe, swipe, swipe on oh, you. Yeah. Tell them by the fire while we eat fondue. I don't know about me, but I know about you. So say hello to Falsetto in three, two, swipe. I'd like to be everything you want. Hey, girl, let me talk to you. If I was a boyfriend, never let you go. Keep you on my own, girl. You'd never be alone. I can be a gentleman, anything you want. If I was a boyfriend, never let you go. Tell me what you like, yeah, tell me what you don't I could be a buzz light, yeah, fly across the globe I don't ever wanna fight, yeah, you already know I'ma make you sound bright like you're laying in the snow Bar Girlfriend, girlfriend, you could be my girlfriend You could be my girlfriend until the upper world ends yes. Make you dance to a spin in the toilet Boy, Boys going crazy on the sweat like a whirlwind swaggy I'd like to be everything you want Hey, girl, let me talk to you if I was your boyfriend, never let you go. Keep you on my own, girl. You'd never be alone. I can be a gentleman, anything you want. Hey, Nikki. If I was your boyfriend, oh, never let you go. Never let you go. So keep
you so we're trying so you know what you could be a little more receptive please you're hurting my feelings I quit all right so are you guys enjoying the show We got yelled at. Oh. Okay, well, we can't sing. All right. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of the show. Hello. Hello. I know. They're both on. Okay. All right. Well, the results are in. Are they? Yeah. Once the guys set up backstage, we'll conclude the show with the awards. The prizes for third place is a $25 cash prize, second place is a $50 prize, and first is a $100 prize, plus a free tux rental for prom. Are they there? Wait, 
I see the, oh, who are the? Yeah, Jamie. Sorry, I like, don't remember. It's okay. And a parking spot. Thanks, Nikki. First prize gets a parking spot. All right, the Mr. Easton third runner-up, Harrison Phelps. <laughs> Second runner-up, Stephen Marr. And the winner of Mr. Easton 2013, Ben Tran. Thank you, everyone, for this wonderful experience, even though I don't drive. <laughs> don't tell my mom. I'd also like to thank my mother for supporting me all through the years and teaching me the secret art. And I'd like to thank Britton for being such a sweetheart. <laughs> if it means anything, I like you more than Duffy. Thank you, Ben. Good job. Congratulations. Okay, and that concludes this year's Mr. Easton. Great job to everyone. Thank you, everyone.